you cannot make this up. You cannot make this up. They are telling you the exact opposite of what is the truth. Hello YouTubers, Alaska Prepper here. Happy Friday, ladies and gentlemen. Before I forget, we will be having our Friday live stream today, as always, at 2 p.m. Alaska time, 6 p.m. Eastern time. Hope you're all doing well. Hope you all had a good week so far, and hope to see you later on this afternoon. This time around, ladies and gentlemen, people will lose everything. Last time was just a practice run. The 2008 great financial crisis as they've deemed to call it was just a practice run this time around people will lose everything and i've talked about this in previous videos that ceos and people that are insiders they know what's going on and they've been selling out of their positions for a while now it just happens to be that now they're dumping their stocks at the fastest pace in history why are CEOs and corporate insiders selling their stocks at a far faster rate than we have ever seen before? Why do you think, ladies and gentlemen? If you knew that you were going to run out of water tomorrow, if you knew that the water in your faucet tomorrow would cease to flow, what would you do? You would fill up every tub, you would fill up every bucket, everything that you had in the house that would hold water. What are they doing? Right now, they are filling in their tubs, ladies and gentlemen. They are getting out because they know what is coming. These people, these CEOs, these insiders that are in the upper echelon of the socioeconomic ladder, they are not stupid. They know how to play the game. They know how to transfer that wealth from the layman over on to themselves by bribing politicians, by lobbying politicians, by having politicians change laws and regulations that would favor them. Before I even get into this article, let me just give you one example. Everyone is always raving about the minimum wage and how the minimum wage should be higher. All right? First of all, let me tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, your wage should be a resemblance of your labor and your skills. If your labor and your skill or your skill set says that your wage should be more, you will earn a higher wage. Let me tell you how it is that big corporations love a minimum wage. Let's just use Walmart, for example. I'm sure that Walmart is in favor of having a $15 an hour minimum wage. And I use $15 an hour because that's what we've been hearing for the last couple or several years, really. Although anyone who's living on $15 an hour today is probably barely making ends meet. So how did that work out? Not very well. But Walmart, Amazon, they love the minimum wage. And I'm sure that they are more than willing to have a law passed nationwide that says that everyone, every employer has to pay a minimum wage or higher. And why is that? Well, ladies and gentlemen, your local pizza shop, your local bodega or convenience store, your local bakery, many of these mom and pop shops, they cannot afford to pay $15 an hour. Not, a, not are they only up to their necks on trying to keep up with all of the regulations and things that government tells them they have to do in order so that they can just run a business to feed their families, but they have to keep up with inflation as well. And it seems that whenever they raise their prices... People, people tend to go to places where they can get the same things at a lower cost. And that's just, you know, simple economics. So Walmarts and Amazons, they love, they would love for there to be a nationwide minimum wage of $15 an hour. Why? Because that would wipe out their competition. So they may take a loss for a little bit of time, if they even take a loss, but eventually their competition will be wiped out and they will be all that is left. Here it says that they know something that the rest of us do not, and I'm sure they do. If stock prices are going to continue soaring into the stratosphere, like many in the mainstream media are suggesting, these insiders that are dumping stocks like there is no tomorrow will miss out on some absolutely enormous profits. On the other hand, if a colossal market crash is coming in 2022, 
then 2021 was absolutely the perfect time to get out. As I have said countless times before, you only make money in the stock market if you get out in time. Could it possibly be that many of the richest people in the world have picked the absolutely perfect moment to pull the trigger? So if all of these wealthy people are getting out of the stock market, then who's left in it? I'll tell you right now who's left in it, ladies and gentlemen. You. Your pension plan. That's who's left in it. The average layman is going to end up losing everything when this paper tiger finally burns in the inferno of what is inflation. And so far this year, there has been $69 billion in stocks that have been sold by CEOs and insiders. And here they say that that is an all-time record, and it is 30% higher than what was sold last year. And the, the year isn't over yet, ladies and gentlemen. As of Monday, ladies and gentlemen, the sales of stocks by insiders and CEOs are up 30% from this time last year for a total of $69 billion, as I just said. But listen to this. 79% over a 10-year average. I've been saying this for I don't know how long. I've been saying get out of the system as much as you can. In my opinion, if you get out of the system as much as you can, if you have what you need in the bank to pay your bills, even for two or three months, have some cash at home in case the banks go down, and then use your excess income to build an infrastructure of your own that will provide you those things that you need in case this system falls. If you're not doing that, ladies and gentlemen, then I think that you will feel the blunt of what is the coming collapse. And this next collapse, ladies and gentlemen, there is nothing they can do about it because mathematics does not lie. Mathematics is the same no matter where you are as long as it's in this dimension at least, right? Maybe some beings exist in a different dimension where one plus one equals three, maybe so. But in this dimension, in this physical world where we live, one plus one equals two. And mathematics and physics does not lie. Let me give you a visual, see if you can visualize how it is that this balloon will pop. Because right now we are in the balloon of everything. Everything is overpriced. If you take a balloon and you push it under water, that balloon is going to shrink, but it's going to be under a lot of pressure. So the farther down that you push it, the, the smaller it'll get, the smaller it'll shrink, right? That's the bottom of the market. Now, once you let that balloon go, it's going to go all the way to the surface. But let's say that that balloon is filled with helium. So not only will it go to the surface of the water, but it will continue to go up into the sky and then up, up, up into the atmosphere. And the higher it gets, the less pressure there is up there. So the balloon will expand. And the higher it goes, the more it will expand. And eventually, the balloon will pop. But the thing is, is that the higher it goes, when it finally pops at that very, very high level, the farther down that it has to fall. And the balloon that we're seeing in the stock market, ladies and gentlemen, in the housing market, even in the automobile market, credit cards are being charged like never before. I mean, cars right now, I think the average car price for a new car is like $44,000. Once this pops, the stock market is going to take a dive like has never been experienced in our lifetimes. And I would even say in the lifetimes of those that are still alive back from 1929 when we had the Great Stock Market Collapse, Great Depression, which started the Great Depression. So this time around, people are going to lose everything, ladies and gentlemen. If you are in paper, if your wealth is in paper, my opinion is, is that it won't be for long. It may still be in paper, but it won't be wealth. They continue to say that all of the signs that the economy is starting to slow down is here once again. And a good example were the Black Friday sales, which were down 28.3% compared to 2019 levels. A recession, a depression, whatever downturn in the economy there may be, 
is really a good thing because when the economy gets too hot what is that called when your body gets too hot you have a fever and it has to fix itself and how does it fix itself by having a recession by having a depression that is a way if I can explain it better I would but it's a way of those assets that are within the system that were malinvested it is a way of those assets to find their true market value instead of it just going up because money is being printed out of nowhere Black Friday and Cyber Monday were both down despite the fact that our leaders have been pouring trillions and trillions of dollars onto the fire Meanwhile, the latest manufacturing numbers were a disappointment, and analysts are blaming that on our ongoing supply chain crisis. And ladies and gentlemen, they will blame it on this supply chain crisis. They will blame it on this health crisis that we've been having now for two and a half years or so, something like that, two years. They will keep blaming it on that and keep blaming it on that because they want you to know, they want you to know, not think. They want you to know that everything's going to be all right. Just keep working for the man. Just keep pumping that money into the stock market. Just keep buying those overvalued houses, overvalued cars, and everything's going to be all right until it's not. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, mainstream media is doing their job just like they always have been. Of course, the mainstream media continues to try to put a positive spin on our economic woes, stating why inflation can actually be good for everyday Americans and bad for rich people. You cannot make this up. You cannot make this up. They are telling you the exact opposite of what is the truth. How can inflation be good for the average American and be bad for rich people? It is the exact opposite, ladies and gentlemen. You want to fix inequality? Do you want to fix inequality in the world? Get rid of the Federal Reserve. Get rid of the Federal Reserve. Get rid of the IRS. Let people keep what they earn and let them spend it how they want to spend it instead of feeding this huge government that we have that thinks it can fix everyone's problems by taking their money which only causes more problems and hardships the only thing inflation does the only thing that inflation does ladies and gentlemen is that it transfers the wealth from the average American and the poor American onto the wealthy Americans that is what inflation does if you don't know this by now you're gonna find out in a hurry exactly what inflation does because we are going to have not only a repeat of 2008 not only a repeat but it's gonna be in a, at a grandeur scale this is going to be the greatest financial collapse in the history of mankind not saying because I want it to happen because ladies and gentlemen trust me when I tell you this my ounce of silver I wish that that one ounce of silver never went up to a thousand dollars because a world where an ounce of silver is a thousand dollars is not a very good world at least for that country go to Venezuela where one ounce of silver is th three million bolivars in Venezuela in 2012 an ounce of silver was selling for I think it was about 250 bolivars for one ounce of silver nine years later one ounce of silver in Venezuela is selling for three million if not more by now this is the last time I checked three million or more bolivars and ask yourselves who really wants to live in Venezuela under those conditions that they're living in now and ladies and gentlemen I'll end up with this but I do want to show you a couple more slides that I have prepared for you it says here, if politicians are going to get this irrational over this new part of the song that never ends, how are they going to respond when things start getting really crazy in the years ahead? Yes, ladies and gentlemen, years ahead. As I stated before, this is not a microwave. This is a crock pot. This is a slow cooker. This is all going to dissolve over the next year and years to come. So you have time to prepare. I want to get out of the system as much as I can and that's my opinion as far as what everyone else should do get out of the system as much as you can where you don't rely on anyone else as much as you can for the things that you need on an everyday basis if there was a time in my history 
where I thought that people should be prepping as much as possible, this is the time right now. Meanwhile, CEOs and corporate insiders are selling off their stocks at a pace that is raising a lot of eyebrows. Just like you and I, can they feel what is coming? I can feel what is coming. I've felt it for a while. And I think that unfortunately, I'm going to be proven right. And ladies and gentlemen, let me show you something that's pretty interesting. This here says the nine faces of the 2008 financial crisis. Now, this person here, I won't even mention his name, but it says here, protesters hold signs behind this person at an October 2008 congressional hearing on the causes and effects of the Lehman Brothers bankruptcies. Now, why am I bringing this up? Because this is one of the culprits, supposedly this is one of the culprits of the 2008 financial crisis. Do you think that this person is homeless? Do you think that this person is middle class or poor? Do you think that this person lost everything as many millions of Americans did? Ask yourselves that. Ladies and gentlemen, the people that will lose everything this time around will not be people like this. They never lose everything. There might be a murder here or there. There might be someone that they choose as the person that needs to go and spend a little bit of time in jail. Although in 2008, I don't think anyone in the United States went to jail. Anyone. I think someone in, I think in Ireland, some bankers went to jail there. But anyways, that's my point. This, these people, and this person, in my opinion, represents those people. They don't care if you find yourselves without a roof. They don't care if you find yourselves without a job. This lady, ladies and gentlemen, do you think that she's living in a box somewhere? I believe this is one of the ladies from the rating agencies. And back in 2008, if, if you all are not familiar with it, one of the big things is, is that the rating agencies were giving good ratings to all of these bad mortgages, even though they knew that the mortgages were bad. And that's one of the things that helped to create the big financial crisis in 2008 and the housing crash that we had in 2008, 2009. And I don't like to talk about people that have passed away, but this is Alan Greenspan. And in my opinion, like I said, I don't like to talk about people that pass away, but I'm going to tell you right now because it's the truth. In my opinion, he is a traitor to the American people. Why is that? A little bit of history on Alan Greenspan, ladies and gentlemen. His father used to be a gold bug. He used to be a sound money person. And he instilled those beliefs into Alan Greenspan. And once Alan Greenspan became the chairman of the Federal Reserve, all of those beliefs went out the window. I believe that it's because he was pressured by the government to print money like there's no tomorrow and to start that system by which we are in now, where money can be printed out of thin air. Once he retired, he went back to being a gold bug. That's why I say that he's a traitor to the American people. Because before he was the chairman of the Federal Reserve, he was a gold bug. He was all about sound money. While he was the, the chairman of the Federal Reserve, he was all about printing money, all about controlling interest rates. Pretty much controlling the price of money. Once he retired, guess what? He's a gold bug again. And he's back to telling the truth. And this, ladies and gentlemen, will be the losers once again. The American people. And, and people will protest, and people will be in front of Wall Street again, and guess what? It won't do a darn bit of good. Get out of the system. Get out of their nasty, disgusting system as much as you can. That is the way that we can actually do something that makes sense, that actually hurts these players that have been hurting us for so long, that have been stealing our labor, that have been stealing your time and your freedom for so long is to get out of the system. What good did all that protest do in 2008? What good did it do when just in the last two years we've printed, the United States has printed 40% of all of the currency that has ever existed in our country since its inception. Only in the last two years. But inflation is only 5 or 6%. 
as told by the federal government, ladies and gentlemen. Don't worry about it. And don't worry because inflation is good for you. It's really good for the average American people because that means that they'll have to work more. You'll have to work more and you'll produce more. You'll be able to work more and produce more so that you can be giving your labor and your time away to those that never earned it. This is going to be the greatest transfer of wealth that's ever occurred. And I know, Chicken Little. Here's Chicken Little again. That's okay. If you think I'm Chicken Little and you're not taking any precautions to protect yourself, then God bless you. You know, this is a free country. Still, it's a free country. And you will do what you will do. If you don't want to protect yourself, that's fine. But one day you will wish you had. And let me go ahead and read this really quick, and then we'll be done, ladies and gentlemen. The impact of the September 2008 economic collapse. Key findings. The financial crisis cost the U.S. an estimated $648 billion due to slower economic growth. A measure by the difference between the Congressional Budget Office economic forecast made in, two, in September 2008 and the actual performance of the economy from September 2008 through the end of 2009. That equates to an average of approximately $5,800 in lost income for each U.S. household. Now, that's just the lost income, ladies and gentlemen. That's not what it cost us. That's just the lost income. The federal government spending to mitigate the financial crisis through the Troubled Asset Relief Program, TARP, will result in a net cost to taxpayers of $73 billion. Go ahead and add another $2,050 to your lost income. Because even if you make that income, that $2,050, it's going to come out of your pockets. Home values. The U.S. lost $3.4 trillion in real estate wealth from 2008 to March of 2009. This is roughly $30,000 per U.S. household. Further, 500,000 additional foreclosures began during the acute phase of the financial crisis. Stock values. The stock market lost $7.4 trillion. Ladies and gentlemen, this time around, $7.4 trillion will be a drop in the bucket compared to what is going to be going down this time. I'll go ahead and go on record, and I will say that in my opinion, we will see the stock market lose $35 trillion this time around, if not more. If not more, ladies and gentlemen. $35 trillion, if not more. It's what, I, it's what I'm predicting. I'm not an economist. I'm not a very intelligent person, and uh, that's what I think is going to happen. I think it will be $35 trillion or more. 5.5 million Americans' jobs were lost due to the slower economic growth. Ladies and gentlemen, this was after the Federal Reserve had printed, no, not $700 billion. That's the number everyone talks about during 2008, $700 billion. Yeah, the Fed printed $700 billion to give out to the banks and all of those big corporations here in the U.S. But what they never talk about is about the $13, $14 trillion that the Federal Reserve printed and sent overseas to support overseas banks. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, look it up. Now, imagine what happens when the dollar is no longer favored throughout the world and we have those tens and I would say it's in the hundreds of trillions of dollars that are outside of our borders and those dollars come rushing back into our borders because this is the only country that legally has to accept them what do you think is going to happen to the price of bread ladies and gentlemen I hope you're preparing having said that I hope you have a great day prep on because eventually this will happen I just can't tell you when but that's a good thing because it means you have time to prepare remember to be good to each other when good people do good things good things happen remember to reach one teach one and repeat if we all did this the world would be a better place and you know that it will be a better place hey do you like the Christmas tree I know it's dark in here because I thought I'd show you off my Christmas tree while it was dark many blessings to all of your families I'm gonna ask a prepper and I'm out